In 2005, our college was ranked low. We were not making the kind of progress that we needed to make with students in terms of literacy. And the perception of the college was that it was one of those western suburbs places where kids and teachers are struggling. In 2005, the school probably had, and, I ha and it's hard to remember, so I have to say probably, but it probably had a sense of, its, uh, of inferiority, um, that it was a low achieving place, that nothing much could be done, um, that there was no program that would improve it, uh, and, and it was laid back, too relaxed, um, and a place to hide in to some degree. I've always been someone who's tried to make sure that we build the self-esteem of our staff and, and our students um, and to do that you've got to have great results and we weren't having them back in 2005 so it was about getting them. was our 2005 and 2006 AIM results plus some additional testing that we took on ourselves that showed that our students were really um, understanded. We found that about 68% of our students who are secondary school students were reading at primary school level. So intuitively teachers knew that our kids were having problems with literacy but data is really, really powerful. So that really set the ball rolling. When it became numbers and when we broke down the numbers, it suddenly was shocking. Um, and it was never shocking because there were just this gang of kids in the back of the room who couldn't read. And suddenly it became a huge group of kids right across the school who couldn't read. The teachers made the decision that we want to fix this. Principal said, what are you going to do about it? And we were the first sort of school that looked around and said, well, we get a chance to fix it. It's not given to us from on high. We decided that we had to make some changes. Um, and we went about investigating what was happening here in Victoria and started looking at um, other states. And it was coincidental that um, a number of us listened to the same speaker at two different venues. And we came back and compared notes and decided that the work that Carol Christensen was doing in Queensland was something that we had to investigate further. We were excited about this particular program because it was a whole school literacy program. Our experiences in the past and my experience as a teacher has been withdrawing kids from regular classrooms to do literacy. There's lots of problems with that. One is that those programs only improve students reading comprehension to a particular point. It did not necessarily improve their reading to enable them to comfortably go back to class and cope with the reading that was demanded in other subjects. So we saw it as beneficial for the kids that were struggling as well as the kids who were reading at their at, at the expected level. And what it meant is that every student was able to improve their literacy level and that to us was fantastic. It was different because it involved every teacher teaching it every you know, four days a week. And I remember being he quite hesitant because I thought, uh, this looks a bit kind of extreme and too vast and, and maybe she's a guru and people will get sucked into this. And so I had these hes hesitations for a while, I remember, before I suddenly realised that this wasn't mystical magic. It was just really hard common sense based on research. So we, we just put in place a, a whole school literacy program that basically is evidence-based and it draws from two different research traditions. The first one 
is what we know about how the human mind works. And an understanding of human thinking and learning is fundamentally what drives the program. Now that's very different from traditional approaches to teaching literacy. The second thing is that there are a whole lot of studies about what works in teaching literacy. So we have a set of rules about what kind of curriculum, we, what activities we include in our curriculum. And basically, we include things where the efficacy research shows that doing this will improve achievement. So we combine our understanding of human learning with what the current research is saying works and we've come up with a whole different way of teaching literacy. The next thing was not trying to rush a whole school approach that we've adopted. Um, the important thing there was to take time and give staff plenty of professional learning to improve their skills in literacy because the program involves all teachers, you know, art teachers, PE teachers, maths teachers, English teachers, improving their skills to deliver literacy to students across the college from years seven to 11. It's a big ask, so we had to really spend the time doing that. When I first started teaching literacy, I felt quite overwhelmed thinking, oh goodness, I'm not an English teacher at all. And as I actually approached the classes, I realized, okay, yes, I definitely am an English teacher because we are working through vocabulary and English comes into all subjects and that's actually made me a better teacher because I'm actually able to take the techniques that I also have learned, not just the students, but I've actually learned a lot of new techniques by doing this program and I'm able to take these techniques into my maths and science classes and help the students. The way we do it is that we assess everybody and we assess them with a standardised reading comprehension measure and then we locate them in a strand. So in one strand is the decoding strand, and there's students who are reading between prep and year two. Students who are reading at years three and four, we put them in a strand we call transition. Students who are reading at five and six, we put them in a strand that focuses on comprehension. The transition strand has half the decoding program, half the comprehension program. Students reading at secondary, put, we put them in a strand that focuses on critical literacy and learning sophisticated strategies to learn from text. So Carol Christensen gave us the data and then she gave us the philosophy and the research behind it all. And then we, and she gave us the timetable of activities. That was the bit that was worrying me was, well, I've got to resource this. So how am I going to take all this theory and put it into practice? She gave us a timetable that suited all of the research and what uh, struggling readers need and what good readers need. So we then adapted our lessons and our in-servicing for staff according to that timetable what Carol gave us. Carol did develop the decoding side of the program, so we use her link books. Um, there are four link books which Carol um, has written, but the rest of the resources, we had to develop those ourselves based on the guidelines that she set up. And that was a huge and very complicated job. Oral activities, 10 a week for the whole year. How, how do you find that many oral activities? Uh, and one of the things that Carol had said is that the program should be enjoyable all the time and the kids should walk out feeling like they've learned something and, and feeling like they want to come back. Um, pretty hard thing to do, quite frankly. But uh, we understood that the program had to be devised so that it was enjoyable. The kids are learning better than they did before in this particular program because it is targeted for their needs. And that's a big component of this program so that they, whatever they need in terms of improving their literacy is embedded in the strand that they're placed in. So students are never meant to walk out of the door feeling this is way too hard for me. They're meant to walk out feeling I can do this and also it means that students know that we think literacy really, really matters. It doesn't just matter for the student who's struggling, it matters for everybody. When I was in primary school I really struggled with reading so I didn't want to do it at all. And then when I got into high school and I started Sunlit, I 
thought, yeah, I can do this, and I just started reading most of the time. And now at law, doing law, you know, you have to study, you have to read, and it's reading every day. So I think the Sunlit Program really helped me and encouraged me to do that. They have a wonderful principal. Um, the deputy is fantastic, the coordinators are superb, and the teachers are fabulous. So it works here. The leadership team is, is as good as you'd get anywhere in the world. Uh, the teachers, professional and committed, that's why it works. As a parent, seeing Kalinda what she's achieved, we're really proud, like really proud of her. So, and she's going to do whatever she wants to do, <laughs> as if she sets her mind to it. So no, it's good, really good. To see the results that they might get at the end of the year, we give the same test to them at the end of the year as at the beginning or just before the beginning of the year to measure their improvement. And, you know, some students might have gone ahead three or four years in one year in ability in reading. And it's just fabulous. It's just um, really rewarding as a teacher to see that uh, and to see the confidence in students.